Hello. Several months ago, I saw a video on YouTube by a gentleman who, I think, probably only made one video. I never saw anything by him again. And he claimed, I am fluent in 120 languages. What a dramatic claim. And as proof of his fluency, he actually seemed to have a script beside him, because as he was speaking one sentence in each of his 120 languages, he always had his eyes down like this, and he spoke in monotone and very halting and with mumbled words and very poor pronunciation in many cases and it raised my suspicions that he was reading from a script but of course maybe he was simply a poor reader maybe he was nervous in front of the camera but i had my suspicions about his claim and i'm sure that most of others would too and I've been reminded of this recently because a certain person, I won't mention who they are because I, I don't want to get into making this a very personal debate aimed at one person, but a certain person on YouTube has recently been claiming fluency in a very large number of languages and it's, it has led to very unpleasant at times arguments between other members of the language and the community about whether those claims are correct or not. And so today, I'd like to talk about what fluency is and what it means when you claim to be fluent. Well, I use a definition of fluency, which is a formal definition, but many people are using a more informal definition. And w there's a Wikipedia article titled Fluency, which I'll put a link to in the video description, and it describes the differences between these definitions very well. Okay, so... The formal definition of fluency, the one to which I subscribe, is a speech pathology term that means the smoothness with which sounds, syllables, words and phrases are joined together when speaking quickly. And I use this formal definition on my own channel. In fact, in some of my earlier videos, I describe why my my channel is called Fluent Czech. It's not because I'm saying I speak Czech like a native speaker of the language. It's because I use the formal definition where it is about making language flow in a conversation rather than just in a monologue. And the aim is to be fluent with what you have. So even when you have a modest vocabulary and only limited grasp of the grammar, you can maintain a certain level of fluency in that you can have a conversation that flows with other people rather than it being halting all the time and rather than you just blushing and not being able to say anything. So this is what I mean by fluent check, for example, maintaining this flowing ability. And as your uh, vocabulary increases and your grasp of the grammar and so on, you will maintain that fluency, I'll improve it. But with a wider range of things that you can talk about. Okay, so many people, though, seem to be using the informal definition of fluency. And according to the Wikipedia site, this is a high level of language proficiency. The problem with that, of course, is that we have to know what language proficiency is, and we all have different ideas about that. As the article points out, varies vary among pedagogues as to what constitutes proficiency. So it's not a very useful definition. People will simply argue about what proficiency means. For many people, it means you have great pronunciation. For other people, it means you have an extensive vocabulary. For other people, it means that you can discuss things with a native as if you were a native and fool others to think that you are a native too. So this informal definition is one that I'm very uncomfortable with because people have very different opinions on what you mean when you're making claims. And it's a particular problem when you're making very specific claims. For example, when you say I have native level fluency. Most people will assume you're using the informal definition that you have native level language proficiency and they will judge you on it. 
So it isn't that they hate you or that they're being nasty or that they're being overly judgmental. It's that if you're making a major claim of native level fluency, which will be interpreted as native level proficiency, you've set a very high bar that people are going to measure you against. Now, we could say that proficiency is on a scale. From very basic, I'm just starting out, if you say I've got basic fluency, most people will say, ah, okay, well, whatever that means is pretty flexible, but fine, he's starting out with the language, fine, basic fluency, nobody's going to argue. If you say native level proficiency, native level fluency, you're setting yourself up for attack, unless you really would be mistaken for a native speaker. It's always safe, therefore, to put yourself into the safety zone of intermediate proficiency. I once talked about this in, in a video, that we're a forever intermediate, and it's always safe to say this. When somebody says, how many languages do you speak? I was just asked this recently. Somebody said, how many languages do you speak? And I said, only English. Um, I'm at intermediate level in Czech and very basic proficiency in several other languages. But, um, so I can only honestly say that I can speak English. So stay in the safety zone or in the conservative zone and you'll be fine. Get into this one and you're setting yourself up for judgment. So this then leads to the question of who can judge how proficient, proficient you are. Now I've seen some people say, only you can judge yourself. It's an internal belief and feeling. Well, that to me can be self-delusional. If you think I'm fantastic, I'm proficient, and the only reason nobody else recognizes it is that I'm a misunderstood genius, is that delusion? I don't believe you can only judge it for yourself. Sure, we all have the feeling that we are more proficient than it sometimes comes out in real life because we have extensive passive vocabulary and so on and sometimes struggle to articulate what we want to say. But an audience is going to not care about how you feel yourself about your own abilities. They want to judge it based on what they see and what they hear. So the second group is, should other language learners judge you? And I see on language forums people often ask um, questions about how fluent am I? because they're asking other language learners who've been through the same path what they think. And to make, again, to make a bold claim is quite problematic because very often somebody who is in the safety zone, at the high end of the safety zone on that scale, will may say, I speak language X better than you do, and I am not fluent. I would never claim fluency. I'm staying in the safety zone forever, even if they are very good. And the final one is native speakers. And I actually think these are the best judges of our fluency in a language in terms of the informal definition of proficiency. And the problem, though, is that native speakers can either be harsh, they can hear a tiny mistake and say, huh, nobody would ever mistake him for a native speaker. Or they could be very flattered that you're even trying to learn the language. Wow, nobody learns our exotic language. You're fluent already, even when you can only speak a few sentences. I had an example of this when I was first learning Czech in the post office. I struggled to say I wanted to buy a couple of stamps, managed to somehow blurt it out, and the woman in the shop said, in the post office said, Wow, you speak really beautiful Czech. And I blushed and I was really happy. But of course, she was just complimenting me because she was impressed somebody was even trying. But they can also be honest critics. They have much more experience in the language in terms of listening to it, speaking it, and being exposed to it than any second language or third language learner could ever be. And I don't believe it's sensible to ask a native speaker, is that person fluent? Because they're so used to being with people who are native in that language that their own barrier, their own standard of fluency is obviously going to be very high. No matter how good you are, you'll never sound like a native. You'll never seem like a native. They'll always spot something. So 
the best thing, in my opinion, is to say to a native speaker, not how fluent is that person, but how was it for you speaking with that person? Okay, it's about conversation, about interaction, and how it is for the native speaker when they're speaking with you, at least in my opinion. And so, if they said, wow, it was pretty much like speaking with a native speaker, it was just easy, we could speak about anything, then that's a judgment on your abilities, because it was effortless for them. But if they find they're having to lower their own level, using very basic language, and speak very slowly, even when they're being complimentary to you, wow, it's amazing you're even learning our language, you speak it really well, the experience will have been a difficult one for them. They had to constantly be thinking of simple vocabulary, they had to speak very slowly, they had to listen very carefully. So judging your fluency based not on your abilities, but on the experience, the feeling that other pe that natives have when speaking to you seems to me to be the most accurate measure. That's it. Thank you.